All righty, it is 103, so let's go ahead and get started. All right, let's so, get started. So over the past couple of weeks, I've been accumulated um, some questions. There aren't a lot of them, but I, I was going to go over the questions that people asked. And then really the purpose of this is um, that we can have live questions, and which, which is called Stump the Chump, and I'm the chump. <laughs> so, so let's go ahead and start with with the questions that have been asked. So, I um, this was an early question. I did not see anything on phone call client sessions. I assume this is still an option. Um, so I've I've got it in the slides, but I will. I, but I, I will, yes, Sonia, I am on a call. Uh, <laughs> not the new one. I just need uh, something um, on we... my fingers right now. But you, you can give me the new one if you want. Can can we mute mics if there's going to be please. background chatter, please? Can everybody mute? Yeah. Okay. So, um, yes, there there is still an option for phone and how how it works. Let's go ahead and go into engage. I'm going to go ahead and sign in. And when you create a session for a client, I'm going to go to my uh, client requests. And I'm going to choose any one, one of my clients. And I'm going to um, add a session. Uh, actually, I'll just edit one that I have. And if you scroll down, you will see um, the option for the session type and phone is indeed one of the session types. Okay. So we're gonna go back here. Um, the next question is, is there a search for clients in an engage and can we see the mentoring sessions for the client? Yes, there's a search bar at the top that is incredibly useful, and I'm going to show you some of the ways that you can use it. So you put the name of the client that you're searching for. It can be a partial name or a full name. And then you, you click on the option that it gives you, and it calls up the client record, and it lists all of the sessions. So I'm going to show you this live. I'm going to go home. And I'm going to um, search for my client, Eileen Levitan. I'm going to go to her record. And if we look at all her sessions, we can click view all. And there are, and we can actually sort it by, by date. So here are all of her sessions. We can view those sessions. And you can actually see this, and there are the there are the 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 uh, notes for the uh, client, so you can actually do this for any client, whether it's your client or or not. All right. Oh, before I do that, I I want to show you some other interesting uses of the search function. So clients and mentors aren't the only thing in, so I can actually um, search for a mentor and I can Linda Zangrilli, I can get her contact information. And this gives me, um, if, if you're trying to email Linda or you're trying to reach Linda by phone, all of her stuff is in here. So that's one way that you can learn about mentors. There's another way, which is really interesting. I can search for Bucks County and our chapter has an account, it's called. We click on it, it shows all the branches and it shows all the affiliated contacts. If we do view all, these are all of the mentors for our chapter. And um, you can actually sort them 
sort them by name. You can look at, there's a little filter button here. This is a little funnel. And you can say, I just wanna see the active and provisional uh, manners. And um, let me close this. And then this gives you the complete list with their names, email addresses, phone numbers, and things that they do. So under here, I can look at active provisional, and I wanna look at the subject matter experts. And I can find out that we have two. We have Mike Phillips and uh, Suk Wong is a, our subject matter experts for our chapter. And you can go down here, clear all these filters and apply. And so this is how you can find uh, and contact mentors in your chapter. And this works for any chapter. So I can put Tri-County in here and there's the Tri-County. I can go down to their list and I can look at all of the mentors in their chapter. So if you're trying to find out who the chapter chair is or so on and so forth, you, 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 you can search for anything in this list. It is, this search function is very, very powerful. Okay. So, Charlie? Yes. Can you just tell me how, how do you get that quick filters again? Okay. What was you, the, let, let's go into, let's, uh, um, we, we can go into score Bucks County. Yep. Uh, and I'll show you how that works. So we get the list. We go down here to view all for the, the, for the affiliated contacts. Okay. And then the filter is this little icon over here that looks like a funnel. Okay, that's what I missed. Thank you. Okay, and now don't forget it remembers the filters. So if you go, oh, I want to see only the perspectives, um, and then you come come back here, it'll remember that you had this set, and you'll go, where are all my people? Well, you have to clear the filters. Thank you. Okay. Right. So let's go back to, there's that. Okay. Does Engage send an email to the mentor when a client is assigned to them? The answer is yes. And this is what the email looks like. Now, what I found is that if you're logged into Engage in your browser and you click the client link, it'll take you right to the record for this client. If you're not logged into Engage in your browser, it asks you to log into Engage, then it takes you to your homepage. So you have to come back here and click again. So um, that's, that's a little oddity of, of the link embedded in your mail is that it assumes that you're logged into Engage in, in your browser before you <laughs> click that link. So it's- And that's my, that happens to be my guy and I, uh, I use that to get in to get, to send him an email, so. Yeah, yeah, it worked, worked well. So yeah, so, so you'll continue to get mails just like you have now. Now, in this case, there was a little confusion and I'll explain what happened. It was first assigned to Seth and then Al or Irwin reassigned it. Well, what it doesn't do is tell you that a reassignment happened. So Seth gave me a call with this mail and said, what's going on? I can't see this client. So what had happened was Irwin had reassigned it and SCORE doesn't tell the originally assigned mentor that it was reassigned. It's uh, kind of odd because I made Seth, I, made, I didn't know this, but I made Seth my co-guy. <laughs> How perfect. funny is that? <laughs> That's great. Okay. So let me, um, let me go back here. And um, so will an active mentor automatically get notified before being made inactive? The answer is no. 
the mentor must log in to engage to see their uh, stat status. So this this doesn't uh, uh, score national doesn't warn you if you've been made inactive. And the main reasons you you could be made inactive is if you haven't logged in to engage for three months. Um, then 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 you would be automatically made inactive. If you don't log in to engage for three more months, you're automatically dropped. Um, so so they're, they're a little more process driven here in terms of um, um, ma making mentors in. OK. Um, th this was a, a more recent question. Um, how do I change a client's status to withdrawn or complete? And I've got screenshots, but you you go to the client record and there's this little down arrow next to the accept the client request. And then there's an update, update status option. It, when you click that option, it pops up a window where you can choose these, the, these, choose these options. Let, let, let me show it to you live. So you would pick your client. I would go to my client re requests. I'd pick my client and I'll pick on Corey again. And then next to it is update status. And this is where you choose withdrawn, which is they have, they, they've decided they don't need to be mentored anymore, or it's complete that the the mannerings just finished that, that they're they're complete, have everything's done. So this is really um, a a choice that you have. You 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 usually withdrawn is the client has walked away. Complete is you've collectively agreed that you're done. You go back and do that one more time for me, Charlie. Sure. You go home. Right. You go my, uh, you you go my client re, re requests. Right. So my client requests is all your clients. Right. And then you would do view. So you would go to the client record, choose this little down arrow. Oh, I see it. Get update status. Yeah, the, it's 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 kind of hidden. And then um, you would update that client status. Uh, so Charlie, if they don't show up, which is the right selection, because you don't know if they're going to try to get another appointment or. Um, well, um, you would. So so what are you 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 doing? Trying to reach out to them and see if they're go going to. Um, schedule a a session, or or what's the interaction between you and the client? Well, sometimes you have an appointment and they just don't show up, and then I don't really. There's, I know some people say, you know, if you don't show up and you don't contact me, you're you're done. Right. Some people, yeah. some people try to reach out and say, hey, you didn't show up. Do you want another time? Yeah, we so, we we typically want? try to reach out. You know, my rule of thumb is three times, so three strikes. And if they don't reach out, then I then then I mark them as withdrawn. There there is an unable to contact, and I am not sure if if that takes them off of your list or not. But 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 that might be an option too. Yeah. So my question is, do we have any parameters for when we use unable to contact or withdrawn or completed? Like do well, you have particular well, criteria? Well, well, what, what the criteria that I use for withdrawn is that they've walked away. They've, they've, they, 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 they don't need man mannering. You've talked to them. No, this isn't what I, I, I need see it. Um, or complete is if the course of mentoring has run its course. You've mentored the person, they've, 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 they've made all the progress that they want to make and that you were done, okay? 
the unable to contact i'm assuming is if you've tried to reach out to them and they and and they are just ghosting you then that's the option right so but that's my question is so if i have clients that you know they definitely we were mentoring for a while and then they dropped off the face of the earth and they're not you know they don't call they don't write they're obviously not interested anymore so do I leave them as one or the other? And then you've got that little, you know, I tr did I contact the client box? Do I check right. that or not check it? I kept trying, but did I actually yeah, contact I, them? No. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I, you know, cause I've changed all my statuses and they all change back. Yeah. That, so would you, did you send that list in? So we I'm, can- I, Charlie and I are gonna talk about the specifics of the list after that. But I, you know, I was just wondering if we know what the software is actually doing with that data. Well, 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 I, I would not take them coming back as a function of engage. I would take that as a function of the fact that that we just got onto the system and Score National has been monkeying with our data. Right. Well, some of them I've gone back and done it again, and they still came back. Okay. So they're all back to submit it. And these are people that many of them were people that I inactivated long before we converted. Okay. And they're like, yeah, they're like zombies. I okay. Well, 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 if, if that keeps going on, then that's a score help desk ticket. Okay. Um, but I'm still, still not clear about when we're going to use gonna unable to contact versus withdrawn. Like if they've definitely, obviously are not interested anymore, well, let's, as let's opposed to... Out. This yeah, is we another... have we don't we don't have I guess the clarity from the the score national people. So right. let's see if we can find what their definition is. Right. So my big question is, what are you doing with those data points as differentiated data points? In other words, are you doing one thing with the clients if they're one, if they can't contact, and another if they're withdrawn? You know then I'll know, you know, in other words, why, why, why do we have these differentiations as opposed to just. That's what, Char activity? that's what yeah. Charlie's looking at. Yeah. And, and to be honest, the only thing that we're me measured on are new cases. So we're, we're rated on mentoring sessions, which is new cases, follow on sessions and seats in se seminars. All, 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 all of the other stuff, um, we're, we're, we, we're never rated on, nor are there any metrics that we're told about. So my advice would be if you got a new client and you've tried several times, that'd be at least three times, sometimes phone calls, sometimes emails, and enough time has passed, then I would just say withdrawn. And, and what about out of the system? And what about and, old clients, people you mentor for a while and then they- I would they just close. mark them as closed. Okay. Was that the option closed? Was that complete. one? Complete, I'm... just say complete. In okay. other words, they're done with us. Um, you've completed their set. I think complete sounds better than withdrawn. Okay. Withdrawn to me is, and I'll get clarity on it. Withdrawn to me is somebody who, initially wanted sessions and then changed their mind. So they withdrew from the, from wanting us. But right. if you had some sessions with them and they're not continuing, I'd say mark them complete. Okay. Well, you know, the rules of good data is if they gave you these choices, they were thinking that there's some reason they want to know what the difference is, but that doesn't mean they put good labels on them. Obviously yeah. they didn't put good instructions. So right. my question is, what were you trying to do with this information so that I know how to tell you what you what it is you're asking me? Well, yeah, as Charlie said, we know what we're judged on. Right. And basically, this is housekeeping. <laughs> so we don't want to clutter our records with people who aren't coming back for whatever reason. So mm -hmm. if you if you have a client that's hanging out there, you haven't seen them, just mark them complete. Okay. Okay, so that takes us to, that's the end of the questions that I've been asked. So it's, it's open question now. <laughs> yeah, Charlie, I, 
Charlie, can I make a comment? How to, how to use the calendar. With the, we, we are not using the mentoring calendar in Engage yet. Okay. Now, I did give training on the Google calendar as, as, as part of the and engage train training. Um, do you want me to go over that? I, I since I can't figure it out, I would appreciate it. Okay. Or we can do that tomorrow if I'm the only one when I talk to you. It doesn't matter. Is everybody else having the same issue? Okay, I will call them as well. Thanks. No, I, yeah, I would no. I would go through it because I okay good. I don't know what okay. else to be doing. Just don't try to use the Engage calendar. That's number one. Right. So, okay. What I do is okay. I go to Google I, I, and I, I sign in as, as me, score as score Bucks County. I go to the calendar. Now you 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 can start in Gmail and then go go to the calendar. It doesn't matter how you get there, but this is the Google Calendar. And if you want to schedule a session, you pick the date and time that you want. Um, I go to the More Options button, and I put in a, 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 a title with, you know, so-and-so. Um, you can, you can actually add a Google Meet conference here if, if you'd like to. Um, you go over here and add guests, and I'll just add my own personal mail account as a uh, guest. And, and this is the real power of this thing. You can notify 10 minutes before, you can notify um, one day before, you can let them know a week before and put as many of these as you want in so that once the client accepts the request, it'll remind them. Um, and you, you can put any notes that you want um, in the session. And then you um, can hit save. Charlie, and, hold on a second. Yep. This is Bill. Uh, one thing before you leave um, is just open anyone is there is, um, um, see the three dots next to the X in the upper right-hand corner or more actions? If you bring that down, especially if you have a repeat client, you're mm -hmm. doing your notes, yep. see where it says duplicate? Yep. That is the best because you've got all the data, you got it set up the way you like it. Now all you have to do is edit the date. And that's the last thing I typically do after I finish my notes and put the next date in as I go and use that to put in the next session. Okay. And you were great in giving us the second uh, reminder, which puts in the one day before. That was a, another little gem. So thank you. Okay. Yeah. Charlie, what would be the downside to having both calendars, my calendar, which is a Google calendar, merged with my score calendar? Um, I, I don't know how you merge your calendar with the score calendar. They're both under calendars. You can put two addresses in and look at both. Well, well, if if you're using your count, your personal Gmail calendar, then the client will have will see your personal Gmail uh, address. Okay. Versus using the score calendar, will where where they'll they'll see. Char charlie.morris at scorevolunteer.org. Okay. All right. And then it's very simple to delete them if you wish to cancel. You just, I click on the option here. You can hit the trash can and say send, and it will let you know. And when the client accepts, um, you will get um, get a notice from your calendar that the client accepted. Okay, clear as mud. All right, more questions. 
Yeah, in terms of new account assignments, does the there's a software now we put in like our skills? Is there does that start to suggest who to assign? Is there like a algorithm behind all this now that you put in all your skills and everything? Yeah, yeah. It, it's if it, it, it's called the computer program known as Al Cassidy and <laughs> and Erwin Mickelfelter. <laughs> So no no there's there's there there there's no computer algorithms how it works there are three ways that mentoring assignments come, come into our chapter one is they go onto our website and they type in a form and then that goes into the client client intake queue and then Erwin and Al look at it look at what the request is, and then they uh, sign. The other, it comes in through our Grasshopper voicemail account, where then Irwin creates the client record by hand, which goes into the intake queue, and then they assign it. The third way is if your profile is publicly available on the SCORE website for a client to search, a, a client can request you directly. Then, okay. then the assignment comes right to you and doesn't go through Irwin and Al. Now, currently the way it's working is that I will put clients in the system, but Al is doing all the assigning to keep us from double dipping, sending Two, two mentors to one client, et cetera. So Al's doing all the assigning. I will do whatever comes in uh, okay. setting the client up. Yeah, I, I thought maybe because we put, you know, our skills over there, there'd be a keyword search. In other words, if a client is looking for us, it would match to the keyword search. And, and then what would pop up to you guys would be, here's a list of potential mentors that match the keywords that the potential client has inputted but that sounds like i'm way beyond the well, uh, well that's how the ability it, here well that that's how it works when a client searches for a mentor themselves they'll actually search via keywords and they'll get a list of mentors they can request and then they pick one oh. so, so, so there, there's a way to do it as sophisticated as Al and I have is a spreadsheet with the skills next to it. So okay. We try yeah, to just, win and find yep. what we can. Right. Yep. That national search is the way I got some uh, earlier in the year. I could, before even before I moved down here, people would see some things about government contracting or so that I had in my profile or solid waste management. And that's the way I got direct uh, requests from all over the country and that, okay that was not a good idea so i cleaned up my profile a little bit to <laughs> eliminate some of that right yeah and the only reason why i'm asking you know that the, i think the better experience that the client has in trying to reach the first mentor that is closest aligned to the skill sets they're looking for while we all reach out and say okay i don't have that skill set let me see if i can find somebody that does, um, if they were that much closer on the first try, it's a better experience for them. Right, and and just, just to let you know, since we went through this before, I'll go over it again. Again, you can have um, in your profile, um, you have the subject matter expertise, which are keywords you put into your pro profile, and then they have your how I can help score, your industry expertise and whatnot. And, and these are all things that make you searchable. Then you have accept direct requests, which you can turn on. And then are you willing to serve clients outside of the local area? Oh, okay. so this all controls who can see your profile when they search score national okay and then this controls the maximum direct client requests per week and that's what 
Fred was alluding to, he had a very attractive profile and probably had his limits set pretty high and was being buried in requests. Got it. Okay. <laughs> so anyway, this, th this is why they want you to put in your subject matter expertise, yep. how you can help, and these industry areas. Um, okay. So Charlie, it used to be that we could say how many per month or per week or whatever. No. Now it's only per week. So that means now it's per week. Correct. Uh, yeah. So if you can only deal with like one a month, then what do you do? Once you get a new client, you change it to zero or something. Yeah. That, I mean, that's the, 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 the best that you can do. What some you, you can also use the pause mentoring assignments option. Okay. You really go down and it says something about uh, request limit reached. Well, that's that that's a checkbox that they set when the limit's been reached. So if you're in a week and you've received five requests, it'll check this box for you. This is not an option that you check. I got it. That's they're telling you that you've reached it. Okay. Okay. But then again, you can use the pause mentoring assignments and then put an end date for when you want the uh, to re 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 resume. And um, you know, you you obviously want to use this with caution. But um, you know what it's intended for is if you're going on vacation um, and you know so on and so forth. Okay. More, more questions. Charlie, this is Dick. Um, are we, can we reassign uh, clients from one mentor to the other or change from a co-mentor to a lead mentor yet? Yeah, um, a matter of fact, you, you can. And so first of all, you can reassign clients. However, like for example, I can go in here to, hang on, to my, um, oops, sorry. Didn't mean to go there. Close this, you go to my client requests. I can go to this guy and I can reassign them. So I can pick who I assign this to Oh. and re reassign them. However, however, the rules are do not do that. The rules are coordinate with Irwin and Al if you're going to do it. Oh, so that, okay. So yeah, that they do know, not do, do don't do that. Right. And right, exactly. Now, I I will tell you Linda and I just ran into your second session, a second question. So Let's just pick any client. Um, um, Linda, give, give me one, one of your client names. The one, the one we just did, Sydney? Yeah, let, let's do that. S Y S Y D N E Y. Gibbard. Yeah, down here, Gibbard. Okay, so what, what happens is I click this and I can do add edit a session note there's no assign or anything yeah what happens uh -huh. this is currently linda's client right if i click this it's going to put what's the client question so yeah. this this is as though the client was asking a question and you would put the question that the client asked when you hit next right it will allow you to enter a session for that client and list you as the lead mentor. So we just did this this morning with Linda. This client, Joe Lutz, was the lead on, and Linda wanted to enter session notes. So she did exactly what I just showed you how to do, yeah. and then she entered session notes. It entered it as a new case because it's a new case for her as a lead mentor. Well, is Linda now the lead instead of Joe? Yes. 
But I, yeah, and I put Joe in as the as the co-mentor. As the co-mentor. No, all right. Yeah. All right. Okay. So so this just flipped, she flipped them. So yeah, that's how it works. Well, but if what if I don't want to have any notes? What if I just want to change the, I mean, it's a kid, it's a, uh, a client, Steve Mazzo and I are working one. Mm -hmm. And Steve and I have already agreed. I'm on the lead. He's the co-mentor. We've already agreed to make the switch. But I don't want to, we don't have to put any notes in. I just want to, on the system. I would just tell Al to do it. No, okay. no, 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 no. No, let's, he can't. Let's back oh. up. You would become the lead mentor after you entered the session notes. It's going to work just session. like this example. No, no, Charlie, I'm sorry. I'm not explaining this correctly. I thought I had enough coffee, but obviously not. Yeah. I'm, the lead <laughs> I'm the lead mentor, and I want to switch. I want to make Steve the lead. Then, then when Steve has a session where he leads, yeah, then, then he goes in and does what Linda did with Joe's client. What I just show, showed you, where you find that client, this Sydney. So let's go back here again, just so yeah. I can show you. You would find that client. I'm going to close this up here. Okay. Find the client name. Right. And then Steve Mazzo would do add edit session. Put in, I'd say Steve is now the lead mentor or something like that. And then add a session. And then in the mentoring sessions, Steve would then have a mentoring session where he was listed as the lead. The only thing I don't like about this, as I see this thing listed, it she's now showing as a new case with a different number. That's right. And it's going to screw up our stats. Um, yeah. It's also I, going to screw it up if you go look for past notes. Right. And, and the notes will be in there, but it's right. just going to screw, it's going to make this as if it's a new case. And she's been a client for a, at least a year. Yeah, this is an anomaly of their yes, this current, is weird. This is of very their current weird. rules that only a lead mentor can enter session notes. <sighs> it comes up as a new mentoring request. I know it's coming up That's as right. a new case, which is correct. Not accurate. Charlie, will all of the contact information, uh, I mean, you know, name, address, email address, and so on, will that roll over too for the client? Yes. All right, because yeah, because there's there's only one client record underneath it. There's multiple session records attached to the client. I am going to send a note to the help desk, okay. and I don't like this at all. Okay, all right. now now what they're claiming is that they're going to change this at the sometime this year, so both um, lead and co mentors can enter session. <laughs> okay, so, I was so, struggling with this this morning for a slightly different reason, is that I had a client that uh, had, was associated with one business or one, uh, one activity, and then came up with a new request for a, to help set up another nonprofit. And I uh, was not able to put a new mentoring request in and stuff like that, because it was me rather than another counselor doing it. Oh, jeez. Yeah. <laughs> uh. Yeah, I just added it to the list anyway, but it's going to be messy when you say that you started a new business and I have to change all the records to the new business rather than the old one. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, other questions? Charlie, let me ask you one other thing. I was trying to do it. I was putting in session notes for some someone this morning and do me a favor. Can you go to the page for uh, adding a session? <clears throat> Sure. And I'm just going to go and head and edit yeah, okay. the thing session. Okay. Uh, where is the scroll? For some reason, it wasn't taking, oh, this is a little different. For some reason, it wasn't taking uh, the Bucks County chapter. Really? 
Now what happens, it, it, if you go back, it sometimes drops it out and you have to put it in a second time. Yeah, let, let's try it. Let's I go think to, that happened there during it the is. Yeah, there it is. That's what I'm yeah. you, you It, it you, prompted you, me, I mean, because I've done it before, it prompted me to put in Bucks County, but then it wouldn't take it when I would go to, to the next page. Oh, here's what happens. If this is a problem, if there was an error on the page, so I right. yeah, if go, I forgot to put something in. So this th this this is I think a bug in the system. I can put anything else in here. Right. Like I I can put a session note or anything here, and it'll keep the session note but when i hit next and get some error notice it blanked out I, my chapter that's what it was doing yeah and and i've seen that before i i think that's a bug in the system well the strange thing is that i i did it and it wouldn't take and then i went back about to do it about 20 minutes later and for some reason it took it yeah yeah i it's it's a weird thing that i first noticed that when you make a mistake it blanks that field out on you yeah okay Weird. the other thing down in the session is there a spell check feature for the session notes no there's <laughs> there's no native spell checker for the session notes um oftentimes your web browser will have a spell checker built into it yeah. This yeah. this icon here i actually have a product i use called grammarly which is a an integrated spell checker that I pay extra for. Yeah, but, you told me about that before, and I've uh, months ago, and I've been using it, and it's come in handy. Yeah, and and when you have the browser extension installed in Chrome, it'll actually spell 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 check things you're typing into the browser. Okay. So. <laughs> Thank you. Sure. Other questions. Hey, Charlie, um, I've asked you this before, so I, I don't want to uh, make this a stump question unless you got an answer for it. <laughs> the, uh, the, on the reports, the discrepancy in data between the core report and the engage reports, uh, the discrepancy with, with member status or classification, they're, they're um, showing I, different, different, different classifications for in 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 each report for the same mentor. Are provision. you talking the the my primary chapter and then going yes. in and looking at well I well the I, reports I'm talking about the report well but we we basically viewed this which gives you all of the status. And then we went into the core re reports, right? And I, I, I thought that that we looked it over and found that there wasn't a discrepancy. The member, the the, the names were um, correct, but the classifications were different in some cases. Okay. Yeah. The classification I, in in the Brit report is different than the classification for a couple of members. And they're they're provisionals, by the way. Okay. So. Well, well, what I do know about the BERT reports, they aren't instantaneously updated. There's a there's a there there's some sort of a batch process that's going on. That when you change something in core, which everything in core, geez, in and gauge, everything in engage gets instantaneously updated. But everything on the website, the buckscounty.score.org, and the BERT re reports, there, there's some delay between them because they're using some sort of batch process to update them. But that's more than a day. Yeah, I, I can't explain it if you're seeing discrepancies. It, it's still happening as of today. That's all I'm saying. Okay. Well, that's something that if it's um, causing a problem for you, that you you, you might want to put in a help desk 
ticket and ask. It, it's an issue on the uh, on the on the intake coordinator role. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that's the best that I can tell you is is drop them a help desk ticket and ask. Okay. Anyone else? Just one statement for anybody who needs to know. I've asked the administrator of my old Chattanooga chapter to, to transfer me effective this coming Friday, uh, the first. So Good. I should be. I should show up on your list instead of mine. Oh, instead okay. Of the old one. Yay. Okay. Good. That's fa fa fantastic. Any other questions? Nope. Okay. Um, We're good. All right. Well, well, thanks for all of your time. And um, do you want, Linda, do you want me to schedule another one of these for a couple of weeks? Yeah, we, I think it would be a good idea. I'm sure questions are going to come up. Okay. I will, I will schedule one for two more weeks and see who shows up. <laughs> okay, great. Thank you so much for doing Thank you this. Again. Thanks, Thanks, Charlie. Charlie. Thanks very much. Okay. All right. Thank bye. you, everyone. Thank you. See you. Bye.